Hey folks, as I always throw back with some more World of Tanks. As you can see, this is Radford in his FCM 50, ton, 50 tons. Sorry, this is a tier 8 game on Paris, and this is the tier 8 premium heavy tank. Um, one of the oldest premium heavy tanks for the French, and it is one of my favorite tier 8 prem tanks. It is just bigger than most of the tanks around. See, that's a super pushing over there. It looks tiny compared to a FCM 50 ton. Anyways, um, obviously he cares for this tank because of all the markings on it. Um, and so we'll see what he can do in it. Uh, before we, we get into this game, as always, if you want to support the channel, then please hit the like button, uh, leave a comment, and or share this with all your friends and claimants. Um, and so yeah, that uh, that would be amazing if you could do that. We're almost at 400 subscribers, and I'd really like to make it there before Christmas, right? Okay, cool. Um, no, I think that's that's all the things that need to be said. Actually, I'm going to pause this for a second. Uh, if you are playing the FCM, or if you're playing against the FCM, uh, two things, well, only the real thing you need to know is there isn't any armor on this tank, except for a tiny little bit around the gun mantle, and this upper glacis. This upper glacis is 90 degrees slanted back at, um, I don't remember what the, the angle is, but good lord, go backwards, there we go. Uh, slanted backwards at quite a steep angle, to the point where, oops, come on. You know, sometimes I hate this thing. Anyways, so to the point where if he's angled like this, and looking at you, that is almost 200 millimeters. Um, so don't bother shooting at this unless you absolutely have to. I have blocked over a thousand damage in an FCM 50 ton uh, using this. Also, don't ever bother shooting these tracks off unless um, you're get really lucky. You're unlikely to actually um, damage the tank. So if you're shooting at this angle, you might damage it, but more likely this just gets eaten by tracks. Uh, this thing has a has a great rate of which. You just you snap the, the front drive wheel off and track it, but don't do damage to it uh, because of how far out that drive wheel is. So just be careful with that if you're shooting at it. Other than that, everything else on the tank is uh, next to no armor at all, so just go ahead and punch HE rounds through it wherever you want to, because unless you're shooting at that front, you're going to go through. Um, and if you're using the FCM 50 ton, then poke very carefully fire a shot with oh, a snapshot gun you can uh, and pull back. This thing's main advantage is its speed and its gun so use those as you uh, need them. So obviously uh, I forgot to mention that Royal 33 Royals 34 good lord is uh, in our platoon. He's way back there though so we're gonna see as Radford pokes around this corner and starts to do damage go ahead and pops the Leo uh, but then gets hit in return. He's trying to side scrape. This thing doesn't have the best uh, odds of side scraping. But again, you can see the power of the snapshot. So he goes ahead and just pokes out, fires, and pulls back. Um, almost hitting his target every single time. And he reloads nice and quickly. So you can go ahead and put a shot into that IS-2. And uh, he's going to be able to put... Nope, not, not going to be able to put another one in because the IS-2 pulled back in time, but the Tiger, Tiger gets himself tracked, um, looks like it works. Are we going to be able to put a second shot into the Tiger? Yes, maybe, nope, only because we didn't want to. Shot into the Super Pershing, again, this thing is almost laser-like accuracy, uh, and a nice fast reload, you can do things like that with little to no real worries about return fire. Um, as long as obviously you time this, this <laughs> you know when the enemy fired, of course. Yeah. Well, so he's going to be able to uh, use his friendly super pushing his cover, and he's just going to poke his gun around a corner and hit somebody who's doing something silly. The other thing about this tank is its awesome pen. We got that 212 pen and a tier 7.5 gun, more or less, because of course this thing is supposed to be a. It's a. Um, a premium tier uh, prem tank, so it's got that uh, it match makes like a uh, you know basically a tier seven. 
except, you know, it's a tier 8, so, um, yeah, you, uh, can occasionally get into battles like this, which are mostly tier 7 with a couple of tier 8s in it. Ugh, excuse me. Um, but this tank is actually awesome enough that if you want to, you can take it into tier 10 games, and as long as you don't get shot, you will do well in the game. Um, I have definitely carried tier 10 games with this tank before, um, and I'm sure I will do so again. Because I end up playing it more than I end up playing my, uh, my premium tier 8 that are, you know, the standard tier 8. Snapshot into the Leo, and now he's behind the enemies. And none of them are looking back yet. I do, do have to note there is a MX-3075 back here somewhere and the WZ, who, both of which could, at any point in time, poke their heads out and get us into trouble. But it doesn't look like the enemy is actually paying attention. It looks like the, they're just letting him do what he wants. Oh, we missed the first snapshot of the day. And uh, he's going to go ahead and push in. We're still losing this game, actually. As uh, we lose another friendly tank. And is now our buddy over there in Super Pershing holding back this entire rush while Radford tries desperately to take these guys out um, popping shells into their backs as he can and taking out the Tiger 1 next now he's the Super Pershing is not going to go down easy enough preferably he'd like to take out that IS-2 but the IS-2 is actually running away so it looks like he's going to target the T-34 up on the bridge and put a shot into his side and back away before he can get shot. But unfortunately, that's not what happens. He thought the T-34 fired. In fact, it was the Scorpion G behind him. And so he ends up taking two shots. One from the T-34 and one from the Scorpion G. That's why he went forward. He, he figured the... Uh, ooh, Scorpion G misses that shot, thankfully. And um, now he's in a not great spot. Oh, I didn't even know there was a ramp here as we dodge another shell accidentally from the scorpion pop up and take out of the super pershing now he's going to go towards the middle he wants to clear those guys preferably without them being able to see him so he waits until he's not spotted anymore and before he rolls out now that he knows he's not lit he can actually take pot shots at these guys oh no no he's lit hit by the w's head great so <laughs> you can't actually take pot shots unless that WZ-132 dies. Um, but he did get a good shot into the WZ, so that kind of evens the playing field a little bit. It means that guy is going to have to be a lot more careful all of a sudden. Also, with the T-43 here, that WZ is going to not be able to poke out this way. Without, oh, sorry about the awning. Um, with that consequences coming down on him. A scorpion's in trouble. It tries to run away, and... We were already planning for that as he runs straight into our shell. Now we're going to go ahead and push forward and I don't know about pushing down this way. I personally would push down this way and then push in, but uh, we'll see which what Radford ends up doing. He gets a bead on the enemy and so he's actually going to knock down a bunch of trees as he goes this way. No, he stops and backs up. Is that because he thinks the T-43 is going to kill him? Yep, that's exactly what happens. And apparently it's because he elects to knock down every single tree in this line. <laughs> Good lord. Don't do that. It's a great way to make sure that uh, artillery knows where you are. If you just keep knocking trees down. <laughs> okay, so no T-43 right here. He is checking... Um, so what you can do, if you have six cents, is by poking out part of your tank really fast and pulling back, you can see whether or not you're lit by whether or not your six cents goes off. Because even if you didn't actually poke your commander's control around the edge, just by getting yourself lit, you know if there's an enemy tank around the corner. Also, obviously, if he shoots at you. So if you can poke out and see if you get lit and pull back really, really fast then you oftentimes don't actually give the enemy time to shoot at you, but you do gather a lot of information. Look at that. He's aiming for the back track. Misses a little bit high, and um, this time he's just aiming for the center of the tank and just wants to take it out. Good job. 
as he strategically takes out the poor T43. And now he doesn't want to actually he he was thinking about just charging down here. But if it turns out the AT15 has made its way to this corner, and then just charging down is a really bad idea. Um he is talking about he was hoping the T43 will come with him and the three of them can make their way and end this game. Now right now there's three of them in a platoon with what 12 kills among them. That's a crucial contribution and if all three of these guys stay alive there is a brothers in arms for it. Um, I assume Radford's going to start moving and, and this isn't really no. Okay, So the T43 manages to dodge the AT-15 A shell and now we're again knocking down all the trees. Don't don't knock down all the trees. It, it, this is a great way to get spotted by so many things. Uh, really skilled players look for trees falling down in order to um, see uh, where a tank is and stuff. AT-15 not able to make a choice actually ends up getting shot twice for it. Oh no, the second shot missed. T-43 is, got, is actually charging the, the AT-15 in an attempt to get behind him. The friendly Super Pershing is not being shot at you. It looks like the AT-15 is actually just circling around trying to get the T-43. Oh, um, nope. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> As it turned out, he wasn't in fact circling around. Um, he was probably missing or bouncing off of the Super Pershing. That's why his health wasn't going down. That's why I thought he was trying to circle around to come at this guy. Wow, that, um, that escalated fast. <laughs> Ace tanker badge, obviously. Hannah God, Bruiser, Duelist, Fire for Fact, that Brothers in Arms, I called it. Crucial Contribution, High Caliber, and Top Gun. Yeah, all those were richly deserved. That was well done. Look at that. That was beautiful. 7k between the two of them and 9 kills. Adding in the friendly T-43 just to top it all off and get that crucial, which is an actually really hard medal to end up with. <laughs> well played by these guys and well done. This is a great example of why this tank is so awesome and um, how it makes money hand over fist. But uh, also, not it didn't show off all the reasons I love this tank, but I'm sure at some point we will get a game that will. For right now, though, this was a great way to show off the skills and the attributes of the FCM 50T. And thank you all for watching. Please do hit that like button and leave a comment if you enjoyed this. And if you really did, if you want to support the channel, then a great way to do so is to share this with your friends and clanmates and help the, uh, us grow. Thank you all. Have a great night. This is IOE throughout.